Firstly, I think um, the uh, process of recovery is uh, continuing at quite a significant pace. I want to reject any suggestion that there is a stalling in recovery. There is a huge amount of work going on uh, and the decision making processes that are necessary to ensure good outcomes are progressing at a pace uh, that is, I think, um, acceptable given the uh, parameters of, of uh, consideration that needs to go into those decisions. Um, this morning we're going to have a short presentation by Dr. Kelvin Berryman from GNS. Um, GNS, as you know, is uh, a body that's been monitoring uh, exactly what's been going on here in Canterbury. And uh, from the outset, I've always made it clear that as we got new information or new information came to light, uh, then we would be releasing that uh, as, as quickly as possible. Uh, so that's uh, Dr. Berryman's presentation uh, is, is a further uh, indication of um, what we know about the seismic situation here in Canterbury. We're also going to have um, uh, at some point this morning, uh, in, the, in the proceedings this morning, a discussion about the uh, demolition uh, of, of larger buildings in the city, so you can get a time frame around that. Roger has a number of things that are, are part of the Sarah Work Program that he wishes to speak about. I just want to um, talk about some concerns that people have had over announcements that we've previously made. Uh, one was on the 8th of October, the air noise contour around Christchurch International Airport was set at 50 decibels. Um, and that allows the Christchurch Airport to operate 24-7. Under aviation law, you have to have two airports in New Zealand uh, that are able to operate 24 hours. Now, Auckland Airport serves the North Island, Christchurch Airport serves the South Island. So the decibel line set at 50 is not some sort of uh, just arbitrary thing to be moved about. Uh, it is very, very important for the wider safety of the aviation industry in New Zealand, uh, but also uh, provides significant economic value to Christchurch by having the airport operating 24-7. So there is some concern by some people who have small tracts of land inside that uh, area uh, that was subject to appeal prior to our changes under um, the, the decision we made a couple of days ago. Um, I think we've made the right decision for the future of Canterbury uh, and it, that decision should not be uh, confused with the decision uh, to um, uh, bring in Chapter 12A which uh, freed up an enormous amount of land for future subdivision, residential subdivision. Uh, if there are people uh, concerned that they have property outside the decibel line I want to totally reject the suggestion from Mr Cosgrove that I have somehow stolen property of people. That is quite untrue. What we have done is allowed for a significant expansion of residential uh, occupation around Christchurch, or Greater Christchurch, uh, um, uh, in the years ahead. Uh, and we've also said that we are open to further applications from people who do have subdivisible land outside the 50 decibel line. Uh, inside the decibel, 50 decibel line, a thousand sections have been made available in the Kaipo area where there is a, an obvious and crying need for that to occur. But that is an exception. I said that at the time that we made that announcement and that remains the, uh, the situation today. I was just going to talk briefly about what my priorities are and some of the things that are going on. So our focus here at Sarah is still very much on the land issues, um, both in terms of the remaining orange areas but the white areas as well, but then also working with the, um, the people who have just turned green in the TC3 areas, working to give them as much clarity and understanding about what that means. But also working with the other agencies and now doing work on what the foundation standards need to be so we can make sure those foundations are as, are, um, can be standardised to the greatest extent possible and can be as cheap as possible as well. Um, we've also got... Um, We've also, I was also going to mention just to sort of celebrate the, the, the restart project. Oh, that was actually fantastic. Um, I was in there at seven o'clock on the Saturday morning and just seeing the, the, the smile on the faces, whether they be the people that have been setting up the cosmetics counters and Ballantines all night, or Mr Johnson the grocer who was getting his sources in straight lines or whatever. It was just great seeing the real pleasure of those guys. But then being in there later in the day and just seeing the whole energy and the passion people have got to be back in the CBD. And I think everybody who's been part of that over the last week has been really, really happy on how that's gone. 
You spend a lot of time at cosmetics counters. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I should spend more minutes. I should probably should try and find a hairdresser in there at some stage, shouldn't I? Um, bus trips. Um, we've had something like, you know, something like, I think nearly 5,500 people have booked now on bus trips. Um, we've got something like 13,000 seats left. Um, so they are going, but we're very keen that we do actually allow people who want to go um, the opportunity to go. Um, we did have some issues with the phones earlier in the week with just overloading. Um, it's not really our core business doing this sort of stuff. But I think people are getting through now, and um, it's great. We, um, it's going to be exciting getting people through uh, tomorrow.